What's up, guys? Today, we're going to be talking all about Omega cards. So let's get into it. All right, so Omega cards are a big confusing mess, and this is made much worse because the game does a really terrible job of giving you the information that you actually need to make informed Omega card choices. But don't worry, I have all that information right here for you, and we're going to get into it. So I will go into strategies for combining cards and how to know when you've got a winner and how to go about actually pursuing the ones you want. But first, we're going to make sure that everyone understands the basics and what you can actually get in the first place. So. This infographic that you see here on the screen, I have created for you guys. Anyone can access it in nice full resolution by going to discord.gg slash casino. And then there's an MFR infographics channel. You can go get it. I will, if I remember, drop a link to it in the video description as well. Having said that, let's get into the basics. So first things first, there are three types of Omega cards. There are common, rare, and special. You can see here the difference in the borders. Common cards are crap. Rare cards are always part of a set and have one bonus stat, and special cards are incredibly hard to come by. They're very good, they give two bonus stats, and they are also always part of a set. Speaking of sets, sets can be a bit confusing, so let's get into that. So you'll see a number in the bottom left, and that is the number of the set that that Omega card belongs to. And I'll talk about in just a sec how the sets actually work, but I do want to clarify that sets are very needlessly confusing because there's two completely separate lists of Omega card sets and only one of those lists actually matters at all. And what I mean by that is if you go to your Omega card section in the game, you will see that there are 12 Omega card sets and those are the ones that matter. Those actually all give set bonuses if you collect multiple cards within that set. However, again, just to be confusing, I guess, if you go over to the collection area in your activity log or your records, you will see that there's way more than 12 Omega card sets listed. And that's because every region has their own sets of Omega cards in terms of how you can locate them. So there will be like Midgardia set number one, Midgardia set number two, Midgardia set number three. And these all include uh, common cards, not all of them, but a lot of them include common cards. So it's a big confusing mess. You can ignore those. The only sets that matter are the 12 currently that give set bonuses. As for set bonuses, uh, any set 11 is going to give the same set 11 set bonuses, and the more cards that you collect as part of set 11, the more of those bonuses you'll unlock at the two, four, and six card breakpoints. And then you can increase the level of that set bonus up to level six by actually powering up the cards. The stronger cards you have, the higher set bonus level. Star rating, as you can see here, works just like with gear. You can essentially combine five of the same star rating as the one you're trying to modify, and by sacrificing those, you will take it up a star. And it doesn't really do anything crazy until you reach six star, at which point it also gets a grade, which we'll talk about in just a sec. But I do want to mention that every single time you star up an Omega card, it re-rolls the bonus stat. It does not re-roll the exclusive stat. You cannot re-roll an exclusive stat. Some people have been passing around that information, causing a lot of confusion. Don't know where that started. No, you cannot reroll an exclusive stat. Moving on to the card grade. If you've never seen a card grade before, it's because you don't have a six star Omega card, which is fine. There are plenty of people who still don't have one. They're pretty rare and hard to get because it requires a lot of Omega cards to be fed into them. But once you reach six stars on an Omega card, it gets a card grade. And that's just a number one through seven. And it's essentially just a little multiplier. All it does is modify every single stat, the fixed effect, the bonus stats, the exclusive stats, just makes everything a little bit better. So if you get a card grade one, that's a bit of a bummer. And if you get a card grade seven, that is amazing. And every stat on that card is going to be doing really, really well. However, you don't really have too much control over what bonus stats you actually have on the card if you're rerolling it, trying to get a better grade. So a lot of times you end up just kind of taking whatever grade you can get because getting the stats you're looking for are more important than getting an extra one or two percent out of those stats, but risking getting completely different stats that you don't want. So card grade is something to be aware of, but it's not too important. So as for the actual stats, which we can see here, there's the fixed effect and every copy of the same card is going to have the same fixed effect. So for example, every Amazing Spider-Man card is always going to have a fixed effect of attack. There's a future imperfect card I really like. It's the only card that gives ultimate skill gauge recovery and every future imperfect card has a fixed effect of ultimate skill gauge recovery. Pretty straightforward. As for the bonus stats, most Omega cards that you will see are only going to have one bonus stat because you're mostly going to be seeing rares. 
Commons, of course, have no bonus stat and they're garbage. Commons are pretty much exclusively just used for food to bring up rare and special cards. But so rares will have one bonus stat and there are only five options in that bonus stat. You'll either get PvP damage increase, super villain damage, defense pierce, max damage rate, or total damage, five offensive options. If you are lucky enough to be in possession of a special card, there's a second line of bonus stats, and these are a little bit different. They are always defensive. So you'll always get one of PvP damage decrease, super villain damage decrease, dodge rate, critical damage decrease, or guard damage decrease. And then the exclusive stat, Every character has their own pool of five stats and included on this graphic, as you can see, is every character's exclusive stats. So using Captain Marvel as an example, her exclusive stat will always be one of PvP damage increase, PvP damage decrease, defense pierce, supervillain damage, or air to surface damage. So that's the basics of how this works. And now I'm going to show you the strategy that you want to approach for combining them. And of course, I'm going to let you in on what I feel is the big secret when it comes to Omega cards, the main thing that I think everyone should be aware of that will make it much easier to decide how to pursue your Omega cards. So let's get into that. All right, so I've pulled up my game here, and the first thing I want to do is let you guys in on the big secret when it comes to Omega cards. And that is, you really only need two sets of Omega cards, PvE and PvP. And if you get really lucky and you have some really, really solid options within both sets where you don't even need all six cards to be dedicated to one of those two causes, you can start working on neutral cards as well which we'll get into. But so I'll give you an idea. Here is one of my best PvP cards. As you can see here, it has a fixed effect of attack, bonus stat of PvP damage increase, and an exclusive stat of PvP damage increase. So just a super solid PvP card. Conversely, here's one of my top PvE cards. We'll go with this one. And you can see here, it's got villain damage decrease, super villain damage as a bonus stat, and super villain damage as an exclusive stat. And the beauty of these is that a lot of these stats have hard caps. You don't need to get too much of a certain stat. So we do have a list if you haven't been able to find it anywhere. Again, anyone can join my Discord server, discord.gg slash casino. We do have a list, but when it comes to PvP and PvE, it's very easy to remember. 75%. As for a neutral card, now this is actually one of my better neutral cards. Crit rate, max damage rate, and defense pierce. And this card, if I've hit the hard caps on the stats that I care about for a given game mode, I can slot this one in as a neutral card, and it's going to give me good stats that I can use wherever. So that's the main thing, but as far as how to actually get the cards you want, you definitely want to start by hunting the right fixed effect. So I'm just kind of browsing here. So we have this vote for Loki. So I happen to know that this one has critical damage as a fixed effect. So this one is a good jumping off point in that that fixed effect is never going to change. So I can take it up and try to get the stats that I want on it. We don't know what the exclusive stat is going to be, although we can see what the options are. And once that exclusive stat is locked in, that's it. As soon as we find out what it is, it's never changing. You can move your Omega cards to another character, but it will retain the exclusive stat for the character that unlocked the exclusive stat for that card. And then the bonus stat rerolls every time you star it up. So really, you only have your fixed effect as a grounded point of reference until you know what the exclusive stat is, at which point you have two stats that are not going to change. And then you can try to really get the card where you want. By the way, quick note. I get asked all the time, so should I not be just using the combine? If you want to be smart about your Omega cards, no, do not just use the combine. You can browse them real quick. And if you look over and you're like, I'm, I'm not keeping any of these, they're all trash, then it's faster to use the combine. But if you don't want to risk combining a card that you may actually want, do not use the auto combine. But anyway, back on the subject of if you have a ton of cards and a bunch of them are locked, the fastest way to unlock cards and mass is to go to squad and then card storage and you'll see here all the locks but it's actually much quicker to unlock them from here so we'll go down to the bottom here and unlock 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 you can see this is much much quicker than doing it from the other screen all right so now we'll head back to the actual omega cards here by the way a quick little aside story but if you want to have a little bit of a laugh uh, essentially what you're trying to do is raise up the cards that you want so, for example, Future Imperfect, as I mentioned earlier, it's the only card with ultimate gauge recovery, which is pretty important for Captain Marvel. So I am trying to raise that card up. I would absolutely love to have one of these for PvP. So I took it up to four star and I found out the exclusive stat is Defense Pierce. That's fine. It has a bonus stat of Super Villain Damage, which is a bummer because I can't use it for PvP, but it is a decent PvE card. So I have been trying to raise up a replacement or an alternative for my PvP set. And I have two five stars here. 
I have Ultimate Gauge Recovery, Super Villain Damage, Defense Pierce. And then I have Ultimate Gauge Recovery, Super Villain Damage, and Defense Pierce. Very unlucky. Also, what you can't see here is that I actually did a reroll on the six star one, because if you want to, you can reroll a six star by sacrificing another six into it, and that will completely reassign the bonus stats and the card grade. And I rerolled the six star one that I have here. The bonus stat went from super villain damage to super villain damage. And the grade went from a two to a two. So essentially, I just threw a card in the trash. Not too thrilled about that, but that can happen. Super unlikely, but funny nonetheless. So I have failed to get the version of this card that I want four times, and that can happen. But anyway, taking up the cards the way you want them. So looking at the one stars, there's only a single one star that's part of a set, but it does have a fixed effect of attack. So I do want to manually take this one up. Again, you never have to really hesitate about crushing up common cards. Kind of a no brainer. So that bonus stat doesn't matter. You don't even have to think about it at two star because you're going to take it past two star and the bonus stat is going to keep re-rolling. So we'll get back to that. It does lock again each time, by the way. So I don't know if you caught that, but that two star card that we just made is now locked. So if I can find it again here, I have to unlock it again. But all right, so back to the one stars. Now I can use the auto combine on the one stars because I know everything left is just common. It doesn't matter what two star it makes. So we save some time. And then we'll also take up the vote Loki here. And beyond that, I don't care about the rest of these two stars because they're either commons or rares that I'm not going to use. And we'll talk about set bonuses in just a sec. But now that we've done that, use our old friend, the auto combine for the two stars because it doesn't matter. So yeah, we got a bunch of common blue cards. Great. Those are just going to be food. So now we do have to unlock these again, assuming that we actually want to do something with them, which is what we're doing here. Now, my note on the set bonuses. Essentially, here's what you need to know about set bonuses. And if there is another part of this video that could be construed as the big secret when it comes to Omega cards, also this. Set bonuses are not that important. If everything lines up perfectly and you get all really good rolls and you're really happy with all the fixed effects on all the cards in the set, then the set bonuses are nice little extra stats. But here's the thing. Firstly, you're not going to get a high level set bonus if you don't have all the cards in the set. And also, you would literally have to run the full set. So, for example, with set 10, you have to run all four cards of set 10 to get some attack and some total damage. Here's the thing. This one card in set 10 is forcing me to take villain damage. And villain damage is just a stat for beating up the normal mobs. Well, guess what? I would rather have anything as opposed to villain damage right there. So even if I can get some of these set bonuses, they're not large amounts of stats from the set bonuses, but I am giving up a spot where I can have a fixed effect that I actually want. And if you end up making even more sacrifices, like settling for a bonus stat you're not crazy about or settling for an exclusive stat you're not crazy about, you're giving up slots that you have control over for a pretty marginal set bonus. So my advice, don't worry about the set bonuses. If it's convenient, if there's two cards where like, well, it doesn't really matter and one of them is part of a set with another, of course, go for the set bonus, but pay more attention to the fixed stats, the bonus stats and the exclusive stats, because if you're eating two or three fixed stats that you don't like, no set bonus is worth that. And a lot of the sets have an HP card that you may not want or whatever it is, guard damage, critical damage decrease, there's there's some fixed stats that are just not worth having, even for the set bonuses, which again, if you're not running the full set, even the level of set bonus, they're not good. It's not worth it. But all right, moving on. So we'll see what we can do with this vote Loki card here. We've got some more rares to consider here. So let's start with the vote Loki here and we'll go ahead and selectively combine. Now we're going to find out the exclusive stat. And this is the point at which we find out just how valuable this card actually is. So let's find out. And the exclusive stat here, PVP damage increase. Now we're talking. So now we have guaranteed on every version of this card going up, critical damage and PVP damage increase. That bonus stat being defense pierce is nice, but I'm not gonna use it at four star. It has to be at least five star to be competitive with some of my other cards. We're gonna have to reroll it again. And there's still the possibility that that bonus stat becomes say super villain damage, at which point it's kind of a dud card because where I like having my PVP damage increase, I don't also need super villain damage. For example, that's useless in a dimensional duel. It's not a guarantee that this card is a winner. But this card has the potential to be a winner. And if I were really, really devoted to this card, I could take it all the way up to six and then keep re-rolling it until I get the bonus stat I'm looking for, at which point I've created a good card. 
we'll we'll stay with this uh, vote Loki card and see if we can finish the story of the little vote Loki card that could. So we can definitely sacrifice some commons. So there's four commons that can go. And then from here, well, let's see if there's a really terrible one. Okay, so this one came over from my Star Lord, and I know I'm not going to be investing in my Star Lord. So let's go ahead and crush up the Star Lord one because again that one. And, and you can see there from the gray as well, you can see that exclusive stat is restricted to my Star-Lord. It's no help to my Captain Marvel. But all right, so let's see what we get. Remember, this Loki card is guaranteed crit damage and PvP damage increase. So what would be amazing here is if the bonus stat is also PvP damage increase. And if that were the case, this will actually replace one of my PvP cards, one I'm actually excited to get rid of if I can. So one in five chance, fingers crossed. And defense pierce. All right, it's still not bad. Crit damage, defense pierce, and PvP damage increase. And of course, I'm still going to hang on to this because it will reroll again when we take it up. I have this other vote Loki card here, and as you can see, it's a bit of a dud. But because it has that guaranteed PvP damage decrease as an exclusive, I can take it up and potentially see a different bonus stat. But let's just see how many more oranges we would need to take up the vote Loki that we've been working on. So that's a common. That's definitely fodder. That one's definitely fodder. I don't even mind sacrificing these two. And then this other vote Loki, we know. Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, it's a dud in its current state. And then we have this one. Oh, yeah, this is a guaranteed dud. So we'll go ahead and take this all the way to six star. And if we're lucky, we will get more PvP damage increase. What we really don't want to see is supervillain damage. So we've been following this card the whole way through. Let's see if this card can deliver. Oh, that hurt my heart. A grade one and a bonus stat of supervillain damage. We have junk, ladies and gentlemen. Now, it can be re-rolled to see if we can do something better. However, I have another purpose for it here because I am already hard capped on PvP damage increase. So I don't mind sacrificing this. I told you guys about that future imperfect card that I just cannot seem to roll anything but supervillain damage. So let's go ahead and throw this Loki card at it. And this will be the end of our Omega card combining journey for now. But you guys will have gotten to see a card taken all the way up and you'll even get to see a reroll. So in conclusion, cross your fingers for me. Let's see if I can get something other than supervillain damage on this godforsaken card that seems to only ever roll supervillain damage. Here we go. Total damage. All right. It is now a super solid mid grade card and we got a grade four. I am pretty happy with that. I can definitely use that. So all in all, I'm going to say that this was a success. All right, there's one more thing that I do want to mention, and that is an MFR mega sheet that has been being worked on by Neuromancer as well as Lehuser. Uh, they've made an amazing, amazing resource. And so I have it already pulled up over here. They have a list of every Omega card. So if you are hunting for a specific stat, you can look here. I've sorted it by card bonus, and this allows you to track down for example, if you're looking for critical rate, you can see that there is only a single rare card. In fact, only a single card period that actually grants critical rate as a fixed effect. Definitely worth browsing this list and then you can see which fixed effects you want to go after. And once you've harvested a lot of the fixed effects that you want to take up, hopefully you can get a good roll on the exclusive stat. And once you have that locked in then you can take it all the way up and hopefully get lucky with your bonus stats and end up with some really good sets. All right, but so we've actually shared the two big secrets of Omega cards. The first big secret being that you really just need two sets, PvP and PvE, where you want to go after supervillain damage for PvE and PvP damage increase and decrease for PvP. And the other big secret is that set bonuses really don't matter and people shouldn't be stressing about getting all of the cards for a given set because the set bonus stats are just not a big deal, especially when you have to have fixed and bonus stats that you don't even want to try to get that minimal set bonus. Having said that, this video has gone on more than long enough, so I hope this was really helpful for you guys. I'm going to try to remember to drop a link to both this MFR mega sheet and the infographic in the video description below. But yeah, uh, if you want to help me out, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. The algorithm absolutely loves when you guys leave a comment. So even if it's just like, hey, this helped, thumbs up, anything like that, super helpful. But yeah, thank you guys very much for checking out this video and I will see you guys real soon. Until next time. Hey!